Hi there, this is Mark and I am in the yoga room of my gym. Just finished a practice in here and I'm doing the reading from the Golden Present Daily Inspirational Readings by Sri Swami Satchidananda. This is for August 11th and the topic is The Closest Friend is the God Within. It's kind of long, but here we go. To a real spiritual seeker, God is the only buddy. All the other friends are equal. There is no, she is close to me, or he is my best friend. Spiritual seekers don't form cliques. That's all in the mind. A spiritual person, person should be above these discriminations. The closest friend is the one within, your God or your mantra. If you still want a closest friend in human form, then your teacher. Otherwise, you are alone. You can have other associations, but watch for the result. Ask yourself, am I getting the benefits of becoming more rooted in my spiritual life? Is this association helping me or is it shaking me? Is it creating more attachment and confusion? We always have to think in those terms. This is my path. I want to lead a detached life, a serviceful life, not a personal life. So your friendships should not be personal friendships. Your friendship is because he or she happened to be here and you are working together. Yes, friends, but not personal friends. A renunciate doesn't have anything personal because that person is already gone. The minute you put somebody or something as personal, attachment starts to come and that confuses the mind. So spiritual life is like that, not having anything as personal, whether you are a monk or a householder. A householder can also live like that. Then he is a renunciate in the house, that's all. There's no personal relationship, but we are duty bound. My position is this. Yes, I am the husband, I am the father of this house. I have a duty to perform to my wife, to my children, to take care of them. Other than that, I love them equally. I love everyone equally. Because I have some duty to the immediate family, I seem to be showing more love to them. But that doesn't mean that you are not showing your love to others. It's not your change of name or change of dress that makes you a renunciate. The lifestyle and mental attitude toward things and people makes you a renunciate. You know, I, specifically as it says in the end there, it's speaking about the path of a spiritual seeker, somebody who's interested in uh, maybe eventually renouncing this material world, um, making a vow to you know, sort of shift the focus towards that of a spiritual path versus that of a uh, path of the ego, a path of uh, satisfying only the human form. So this is really a message just for those who are seeking that, like he says, the, you know, this God within or this spiritual center that calls us to activate in a way that recognizes that attachments to things, even to people and friends, can affect the mind. It can, it can sway us because we're susceptible to that. We're emotional beings. So if we're really interested in shifting our focus towards a spiritual path, which sometimes happens because you've exhausted yourself from trying to find all the answers from this material world, but the spiritual seekers and my teachers that I've learned from all recognize that continually trying to find answers in this material world, in this world of the human form, will always cause suffering. There's lots of joy. It's not that there isn't this beautiful part of it. Of course there is. But that, that ultimately is this loop that just keeps going back and forth in a circle. And we stay in that loop but if we're interested in what else is there, you know, besides going round and round, there's actually other dimensions that we're not even allowing ourselves to experience and that this human mind and human body 
is capable of launching into, when we have that longing for something else, then this is what this feels like this message is about, because it's hard to hear, you know, you shouldn't have personal friends. It seems like that's a big uh, goal for a lot of us, is to maintain a social network and friendships um, for our personal well-being, you know, to have a shoulder to lean on. But he's not saying we're not doing that. It's just recognizing that the ultimate connection is with this God within, this light within, recognizing this, this truth, this peaceful nature that's within us, every single person. And to be able to call that forward and to have that relationship built and strengthened, that becomes the root of all other relationships. Like that's the, the main one. You know, that has to be grounded. And so somebody might think, well, we're talking about I'm supposed to have this relationship with God. Well, I don't believe in God. It's not the God that has been uh, that has been sort of thrust upon you. It's the God that bubbles up within you that is this higher power, this higher resource or this sense of this universal energy that connects all of us. That's what's being called forward, not some outside picture of what God might be to someone else. So becoming more rooted in that experience, I feel like that will allow us to have a new perspective on all of our friendships. He said something about these are, you know, your friendship is because he or she happened to be here and you are working together. So you're not personal friends, but you're, you have this bond because there's a sense of mission, purpose, maybe even service to others that you are called to do. So that's, yeah, the last thing I want to touch on. It's not to, to pull away from the world and hide in a cave. It's actually to, to feel this sense of detachment so that our ability to be of service to others and to be less tangled up in this drama, this soap opera of what could easily happen, because it happens to all of us at different times, but to get pulled out of that and see that there is a way we can have a higher um, relationship with, with one another. Yeah. All right. I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.